Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us at this very special 97th Annual General Meeting opening ceremonies. I would like to begin by acknowledging the Indigenous peoples of all the lands that we are on today. We recognize that the work of our members takes place on traditional Indigenous territories across Ontario. We also wish to acknowledge that the office of the RNAO is located on the traditional and unceded territory of the Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. This territory was the subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy and the Ojibwe and allied nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. We also recognize that the participants of RNAO's AGM are located in other traditional lands across Ontario. Today, this land is still the home to many First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this territory. By personally making a land acknowledgement, you are taking part in an act of reconciliation honoring the land and Indigenous heritage, which dates back over 10,000 years. We encourage you to learn about the land you reside on and the treaties that are attached to it. Land acknowledgements are an act of reconciliation and we must all do our part. This evening, we are joined by Elder Perry McLeod Chabugizik, who will be sharing a traditional opening. Elder Perry of the Crane Clan is an Ojibwe Anishinaabe from Nipissing First Nation. He is the manager of cultural services for the Nijanasonic Child and Family Services. He is an elder helper resource person for the member First Nations of Wasaking, Shinaga, Magnetowan, Penvi, Doikis, and Wanapite First Nations. In this role, he has been assisting children and families and First Nations staff in the area of traditional medicine, teachings, ceremonies, and workshops. Please welcome Elder Perry. Uh, bonjour, Annie. Um, welcome to this, uh, this virtual gathering. I come to you uh, from uh, Nipissing, my homeland, place of my birth, place of my blood, uh, my ancestors, um, the place that I call home. Anzo Kadishnika Shage Do Dambi Sing Don Jaba and Shnabe and Dao. My Nishnabe name is Anzo Ked, which is uh, one who tells stories. I'm from Nipissing, I am of the Crane clan and I'm Ashkabe was a traditional helper. And from time to time I'm I'm asked to share a little bit of knowledge that I uh, have gathered in my life uh, with others who are also seeking to gather knowledge. And so I come to you tonight to to do that. I want to uh, acknowledge this this time that we are in this uh, spring to summer, this transitional time. We're in what's called the berry moon. The berry moon is when uh, the strawberry is the is the berry that leads the way for the other berries. Reminds us of our the fruits that we have, our gifts, those things that develop from the work we do, and we're able to share those gifts. And so we 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 go out to harvest the berries to accept those gifts from the uh, from the plant relatives. Um, those strawberry plants are the first ones to offer their gifts. So we go out and we do that. And so it reminds us about our gifts and uh, those those things that we can offer one another to share that. And as helpers in the health field, uh, doing that is really important because uh, it helps those others to, you know, to walk with them and to share our gifts to better their health as well. Today I, I traveled a little bit in my territory and I was traveling amongst the thunders. It was uh, thundering and raining, showers here and there. The thunders were making themselves known through the, the fire that they would send down to the earth and, and the noise of, of that announcement of their presence. And then the water would come, the water would break and fall to the earth. And I'm reminded about how life has those times when the sun shines and we are, we are well. And then we go through some rough times and we, we turn to those places where we can receive healing and those who can help us with that, such as the nurses across Turtle Island and all those helpers that do that work. 
And I'm reminded about how that water is that healing water, carries that gift of, of fire, of life. And how it lands on, on our mother, the earth, and it heals all things, including us. And so it's important for us to acknowledge that and also acknowledge that in most of this work, uh, in the nursing field, it is the women, the Quewok, who do that work. And they carry that sacred water within their vessels, within themselves. That water that carries that life, that, that uh, gift of life giving that our women have. And so all these things remind me uh, of, of things I need to know and need to be reminded of. And although there are men who also do this work, the majority of the work is done by our Quewak are women who are gifted with those special medicines and that fire within that water, that healing water. And so each, each of those of you who are here tonight who bring that gift of healing, uh, I want to say chimi gwech to you for, for being a part, being those important helpers, especially during these times, times of COVID, times of uncertainty, when we need our helpers to step up to be there for others. So I'm honored to be a part of this, a small part of this, to help open and begin this uh, this evening. Aho, miigwech. Chi miigwech, Elder Perry. Thank you for sharing the traditional opening with us. What a beautiful way to begin our annual general meeting. Now, let's have a look at the activities of the past year and what a year it's been. May this be the last year of a Zoom AGM. <laughs> Agreed. This year has highlighted the incredible leadership of nurses in protecting Ontarians, nursing them, and alongside RNAO, advocating for patients and the public during this pandemic. Renew prides to work with all political parties, not for us, not for you, not for any party, but for the residents in long-term care and for the rest of the system. What we want to know if the person that is coming in contact with us is fully vaccinated or not. I do know people that went with a condition that was not COVID and did not come out because of COVID. Ontario's government has taken baby steps to slow the spread of COVID-19's dangerous Delta variant. Basically, mandatory vaccination with only exception for medical exemptions on International Overdose Awareness Day, join RNAO on calling the provincial government to take long overdue action on this preventable crisis. The next federal election is happening on September 20th. The Registered Nurses Association of Ontario, RNAO, has released its election policy platform and has asked the leaders of the major federal parties for their views on four specific health issues. My name is Kathleen. I'm a registered nurse and I want to encourage all of you to get out and vote. 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 Thank you. Making vaccinations mandatory for all long-term care staff, including support staff, students, and volunteers. They know they need to move faster come the winter. If not, we will be in a serious situation again. We need to, you know, make sure that we're training our nurses to be able to be comfortable with having those difficult conversations. Two thirds of nurses had reported some issues with poor mental health and the pandemic has only magnified that. The Leading Change Toolkit, developed by RNAO in partnership with Healthcare Excellence Canada, was launched during a webinar this week. To bring transformational leadership and sustainable changes in your environment. Ontario's government has released a strategy for moving beyond step three of Ontario's COVID-19 reopening plan. If this gambling goes wrong, everybody will suffer the consequences. Uh, it is really essential that Bill 124 gets repealed. This bill needed to be repealed months ago. The hundreds of nurses here, they need to see there is a future. Practicing NPs are people who um, lessen that healthcare burden. A nurse practitioner positions yourself in a brilliant way uh, in order to deliver to your patients across the lifespan. But also because of the leverage that they provide across the whole range of registered uh, staff. Urgent need to help curb transmission so we can get as many vaccines into arms as possible. All the nurses are feeling the same. 
kind of pressure, short staffing, no support. And you can also find on that same site uh, the opportunity to send all MPPs a holiday card. Bill 124 is a message to nurses that they are not valued. RNAO invites you to help us ensure internationally educated nurses, or IENs, are processed quickly in Ontario. The, they open a legislation that uh, makes it easier for internationally educated nurses to actually fulfill the educational requirement in Ontario. I came here as a nanny or a caregiver. Uh, I thought I would be able to start practicing, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to. Are here in the sidelines, eager to work and help our colleagues that are stretched to the limit. This task force was established in 2020. RNU wanted to do something for Black nurses. It does make a difference if your environment, the senior leadership of your of your organization, removes the barriers if there are any. For people who are in those protests because they're tired of COVID, to continue to be part of these illegal protests. To make a political statement does not outweigh the rights of a million people in Ottawa to live peacefully incredible that we are allowing this to happen so are we going to ask our colleagues to hide their skin am i going to hide that i'm jewish are we caving to this convoy instead of protecting healthcare workers nurses uh, are the backbone of our healthcare system and i think that it's really clear to working with organizations like rnao on the environmental and social determinants of health not simply to be a spectator but to be active to help shape the agenda Nurses will be at the center of our conversation. I look forward to continuing our work together. Every time we have an election, I always am really excited to see what RNAO is asking for and feel hopeful about all of our political parties adopting these recommendations into their policy platform. They really should be funding a nurse practitioner for every 120 residents in Ontario. Is united and recognizes the strengths that all the different sectors play in supporting the health of Ontarians. March 8th is International Women's Day. This year's theme is hashtag break the bias. As a woman, I think we have a huge responsibility to advocate and to understand this world. So um, yeah, this is a time for reflection for me and for action. Este es un programa apolítico porque ayuda a todos los países. Las políticas de salud de Canadá, como ustedes saben, y de la RNO en particular, son políticas absolutamente de salud para todos. Puro invitar al resto del equipo de salud a que comience a, a realizar. Me complace mucho participar para esta valiosa actividad de formación organizada por Registered Nurses Association of Ontario. We're seeing um, people that are crossing over that are traveling hundreds of miles uh, to try and uh, reach safety of Poland. It is clear that we are in the sixth wave of this pandemic. These trends are likely to continue for the next several weeks. We also want to keep Ontario open. But to keep Ontario open, this, this is what you need to keep. I guess no more masks. If are we okay to, are, are we going to finish the video or are we okay to move on? Oh, maybe oh. Ifra. Did we lose Ifra? We can go ahead to field check. Okay, okay. So thank you. It, uh, the joys of virtual and the technological difficulties that sometimes go along with it. Um, that was a great video. I've not seen it before. And uh Really, it's amazing the work that we have got accomplished over the past year. Uh, so it's my pleasure to introduce our hosts for this year's AGM, Peel Chapter. This evening, we're joined by Peel Chapter executives who will bring some remarks on behalf of their chapter. Thank you, Morgan. Uh, good evening. I'm Paul Emanuel, and I'm the president of the RNEO Peel Chapter. I um, will invite all, everyone to go to the um, AGM portal to see a video which actually highlights all the other chapter executive 
but uh, we're pleased and thrilled to be here. So board of directors, assembly <laughs> leaders, members, registered nurses, nurse practitioners, and nursing students, RNAO staff and distinguished guests, as your AGM hosts, it is my distinct honor to warmly welcome you to the RNAO's 97th annual general meeting. Peel chapter encompasses Mississauga, Brampton, and Dufferin Caledon. We're undergoing a change right now as those uh, areas are now become <laughs> separate chapters, an exciting part of the future. And we also celebrate the past, which has been rich and very involved. We are delighted to be the hosts of the uh, annual general meeting, and it would be easy to list the issues and challenges our world has faced in the past year. And it makes the present uncertain, but the future we can only hope to see improved outcomes. The advantage of attending the RNEO annual general meeting is to hear about the amazing efforts of volunteers who speak out for nursing and speak out for healthcare. RNEO has an impressive roster of leaders, advocates, scholars, mentors, and in the chapters and interest groups are the grassroots, the foundation of members being engaged. Over the next three days, RNEO will share with you the outstanding accomplishments of how we as a collective of committed members have advanced Ontario's health system. You will hear from President Morgan Horvath and CEO Dr. Doris Grinspan about the incredible work that RNEO has accomplished provincially, nationally, and internationally over the last year. Tomorrow at the annual general meeting, we will see nursing engagement in action as we discuss the well-researched and member-developed resolutions that consultation representatives will vote on during the consultation session. A total of 12 resolutions will be considered tomorrow. What a testament to our members' commitment to the improvement of Ontarians' health our health system and our professional and our profession. We also hear the results of this year's governance items from one member, one vote. Following the annual general meeting, our colleagues the, of the Nursing Students of Ontario will have a, a, a session entitled Nursing in the COVID Era, the transition of a new generation of nurses. This session will focus on how nursing students, new graduates experience the pandemic and how they plan to transition out of the pandemic through student leadership and a very important skill, resilience. On Saturday, there'll be networking opportunities at interest group meetings that will take place from 8 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., followed by the closing keynote presentation on the topic, how, well, how will nursing recover post-pandemic and what will our profession look like? The much anticipated closing keynote panel will be moderated by, doc, by Dr. Doris Grinsman, our CEO, and will feature a panel of nurses from different sectors across the province. We ask that you enjoy and actively participate in the annual general meeting over the next days as we celebrate RNL's powerful voice. Be sure to share your reactions and how you're joining us through the hashtag, which is the number sign RNAO AGM. And now it's my pleasure to hand over the AGM to Morgan Hofarth, RNAO President. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Paula. Over the next few days and in the company of over 600 RNs, NPs, nursing students and members of the public, we'll take great pride in celebrating RNAO's enormous accomplishments achieved in the past year. The theme for this year's AGM is Nursing Through Crisis. This year has highlighted the incredible leadership of nurses in protecting Ontarians, nursing them, and as an RNAO collective advocating for patients and the public through this pandemic. This year's AGM is once again taking place in an especially important time. As we begin to turn the corner of this pandemic, we celebrate the triumphs we've had and take time to recognize the trying times we've faced and persevered through. It's times like these where I reflect on how proud I am to be a registered nurse and proud to belong to an association that always speaks out for nurses and the people we care for. Over the next few days, you will see examples of our amazing accomplishments over the last year. As Paula said, we encourage you to share your reactions, thoughts and wishes by participating through, social, through our social wall by using hashtag RNAOAGM on Twitter. I find myself feeling more revitalized and motivated as we gather during the AGM, and for that, I thank you profoundly. It is you, our engaged members, our values-driven board of directors, our evidence-based and courageous CEO with our expert staff, and our esteemed partners that always bring confidence that RNAO is on the right path, building from strength to higher strength. Allow me to introduce to you RNAO's board of directors and special guests. The 2021-2022 RNAO Board of Directors, 
Dr. Claudette Hallway, President-Elect, Rachel Elliott, Region 1 Representative, Christy Butler, Region 2 Representative, Dr. Loretta McCormick, Region 3 Representative, Anita Sang-Sit, Region 4 Representative, Lori Webel Edgar, Region 5 Representative, Alicia Munisar, Region 6 Representative, Dr. Soyan Sito, Region 7 Representative, Regina Elliott, Region 8 Representative, Deb Lefebvre, Region 9 Representative, Una Ferguson, Region 10 Representative, Maxine Lesage, Region 11 Representative, Dr. Michael Scarcello, Region 12 Representative, Julie Rubel, Interest Group Representative, Maria Rugg, Interest Group Representative, Lalize Tuner, Student Representative, and Dr. Doris Grinspin, the Chief Executive Officer. And now, the RNAO Past Presidents. and the Lifetime Achievement Award and Member Emeritus recipients. Next, I'd like to welcome Ontario's Minister of Health and representative from Ontario's major political parties who are present with us this evening. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Christine Elliott, Minister of Health, Peggy Sattler, MPP for London West, NDP, John Fraser. MPP for Ottawa South, Ontario Liberal Party, and Mike Schreiner, leader of the Green Party of Ontario. Our international nursing colleagues, Dr. Kenneth Dion, president of Sigma Theta Tau International Honor Society of Nursing, and Dr. Pamela Cipriano, president of the International Council of Nurses. And representatives from our key stakeholder partners. I would also like to thank our sponsors for the AGM, the Magnus Group and Hub. The Magnus Group is a partner in the world's largest privately held commercial insurance, risk management and employee benefits brokerage program, Assurix. For over 25 years, Hub has been the broker of choice for the RNAO. Hub is a global insurance brokerage that puts you at the center of everything we do. Our reach and resources mean you have the insurance you need when you need it and before you need it. A warm welcome everyone, and thank you all for joining us this evening to share in the celebrations with us. The Honorable Christine Elliott served as the 11th Deputy Premier of Ontario and the Ontario Minister of Health from June 2018 until May 2022. She represented the ridings of Whitby Ajax and Whitby Oshawa. As Minister of Health and Long-Term Care, Christine sponsored the People's Health Care Act, which, in addition to repealing the Lung Health Act, enacted the Connecting Care Act to create a new Crown agency titled Ontario Health and provide the ability for the Minister to create integrated care delivery systems to deliver health care services. Christine, we are pleased you could join us this evening. or we're pleased that you're going to be joining us this evening. Uh, Cause I don't see, see, this is also, she should is be past joining. this. She, she is, is joining. joining. Okay. Absolutely well, she's joining. I was gonna say, I can't say rookie mistake since I did it virtually last year. No, and she... I should have learned by now to check the participant list before I introduce somebody. Um, if not, would the minister be waiting outside? I know she's joining because they connected with me. Okay. Uh, the minister hasn't joined us yet, but we do have um, a representative from the NDP. Here you go. Okay. Well, I am delighted to call on Peggy Sattler, an MPP for London West of the Ontario New Democratic Party to bring greetings. Peggy Sattler is the NDP member of Provincial Parliament for London West. She was first elected in a by-election in 2013 and re-elected in 2014, 2018, and 2022. In the last parliament, Peggy served as the official opposition House leader and Ontario NDP critic for labour and democratic reform. At Queen's Park, Peggy won the fight for paid leave for domestic violence and sexual violence, which remains law in the province of Ontario, 
and has been leading the push for paid sick days for every Ontario worker. She is a tireless advocate for better health care, improved mental health services, and an end to gender-based violence, and is a longtime champion for post-secondary work integrated learning. Prior to her election as MPP, Peggy served as a trustee on the Thames Valley District School Board for 13 years, including two terms as board chair. As a director of policy at a London research firm, Peggy managed provincial and national research studies with a focus on post-secondary education and workforce development, including research on bridging programs for internationally educated health professions. Welcome, Peggy. Okay, Morgan, can you hear me? I can. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for that intro. It's uh, certainly a pleasure to be here tonight to bring greetings on behalf of the Ontario NDP and uh, and the official opposition. And I want to start by by thanking your CEO, Dr. Doris Greenspun, who has been a, a fearless and a tireless uh, champion for nurses. Uh, also want to thank you, Morgan, as the outgoing uh, president of RNAO and, and uh, offer my congratulations to your new president-elect, uh, Dr. Claudette Holloway. Uh, Morgan, uh, you, uh, you will know that uh, you and I met several years ago when you were the president of the Middlesex uh, Elgin RNAO, RNAO chapter, and it's been great to hear your voice at the uh, provincial level. So your uh, theme this year for your AGM, Nursing Through Crisis, I think captures exactly where we are at right now in the province of Ontario. And I wanna say a profound thanks uh, for the sacrifices that nurses have made, the risks that you have faced and the commitment that you have always shown uh, over two brutal and exhausting years of COVID-19. But as we know, the crisis is far from over and it did not start with the pandemic. Uh, nurses have always served on the front lines to keep our communities together. They have uh, answered the call, uh, whether there were emergency orders in place or not, and have always done so with incredible compassion, courage, and grit. You deserve a government that has your backs, just like you had ours. And I want you to know that the NDP will always fight alongside you for the respect that you have earned just by entering the nursing profession, uh, whether you are a student, just starting out in your career or an experienced nurse who has stayed on uh, despite exhaustion, short staffing and burnout. We have just uh, been through an election in this province and I know that uh, all candidates likely heard at the doorstep the same things that I was hearing. I talked to many nurses, family members of nurses, people who recognize and appreciate the vital role of nurses, and they all said the same thing. Bill 124 must be repealed to allow nurses to negotiate compensation that reflects the skills, professionalism, and value they provide. Strategies must be implemented immediately to address the workforce crisis, and this means attracting, retaining, and returning nurses mentoring new nurses and expediting credential recognition for internationally educated uh, nurses. Supports must be put in place now to ensure that the surgical and procedural backlog can be addressed without placing further unfair burdens on a nursing workforce that is already demoralized and stretched far too thin. The pandemic has highlighted the consequences of years of underinvestments in healthcare and in nursing. Ontario was already 22,000 nurses short prior to COVID and has had the lowest patient to RN ratio in Canada for the last 30 years. The failure to address the opioid crisis, which public health emergency years ago has resulted in a 60% increase in opioid related deaths since 2019. Ontario nurses deserve more than words of gratitude from their government. You deserve action on the priorities that you will be identifying at this AGM and the recommendations you'll be making. I am proud of the NDP's partnership with RNAO and with all nurses in Ontario. We share similar goals and similar values, and we will keep up the fight for the respect, action, and investments you need. 
As the official opposition, we won't stop in our efforts to hold the government to account and make sure that the RNAO platform is implemented. And that includes urgent investments to shore up frontline care and to protect, protect and preserve our world-class public health care system. We will work to repeal the anti-democratic and anti-worker Bill 124. We'll work to secure better pay, safer workplaces, and stronger supports for nurses, including mental health supports. We'll push for surge funding to help clear the surgical and procedural backlog, and also to, to see concrete concrete measures put in place to tackle the nursing shortage. Uh, we will prioritize uh, or uh, uh, ask the government, urge the government to prioritize dealing with the opioid crisis. Uh, we are committed to continuing to work with you uh, to get nurses the respect they deserve, the support they need, and to ensure that Ontarians uh, can access the care that they rely on. And uh, before I close, I want to give a shout out to, uh, to Janet Hunt, uh, who I hope is here, and my friends from RNIO Middlesex London, uh, who, who have been incredibly helpful to me as uh, MPP for London West. And I think it was the day after I was elected in 2013 that I got the phone call from Janet uh, asking to set up a meeting uh, so that uh, they could start the process of educating me uh, about the nursing profession, advocating for scope of practice, advocating for health equity and social determinants of health. And it has been uh, extremely valuable to, uh, to my work as an MPP. So uh, I hope you have a great AGM and I'm really looking forward to the recommendations that come out of your discussions today and tomorrow. Thank you Thank so you. much, MPP Peggy Settler, and so good to see you. And I know directly from Janet and from Morgan, I must say, and from all of the people that live in your riding that they love you dearly. So we look forward to working with you hand in hand, and we will work, as you know, always with all parties to move and shape things for a better Ontario, for a health system that becomes stronger, for coming out of this pandemic, honestly, and to help nurses and everybody recover from the exhaustion and the burnout uh, that is being felt. I'm sure it's being felt by politicians too, I must say. Not always we recognize that. <laughs> Not always we recognize that, not only because of election, but you were, all of you, from all parties, on the go all the time during the pandemic as well. So we, we acknowledge the role that you guys have and, uh, and be assured that we will work very closely. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and for always, uh, as, a, as a Londoner, always being willing to uh, meet with our RNAO members and attend our RNAO events. We really do appreciate that. Uh, so next we will go to the Honourable Christine Elliott, uh, who, is, who has served as the Deputy Premier of Ontario and the Ontario Minister of Health from June 2018 until May 2022. Christine, we're so pleased that you could join us this evening. I got overzealous earlier and already did a very thorough introduction of you. So we'll hand it over to you now. Well, thank you very much, uh, Morgan, and good evening, everyone. It's really very lovely to join all of you. And I'd like to extend a special thank you to Doris for inviting me to speak with you tonight. Uh, it is a rather bittersweet time for me right now. Uh, over the years, whether as Minister of Health or in my previous role as patient ombudsman, I've had the privilege of getting to meet and to know many healthcare leaders like Doris, as well as frontline healthcare workers like those of you here today. I can't say enough positive things about Ontario's healthcare workforce. You have gone above and beyond these past few years and you've saved thousands of Ontarians lives in the process. And I hope that you will always know that and always carry that with you in your hearts and in your minds. Whether supporting the vaccine rollout or working in hospitals or in home and community care, time after time, Ontario's nurses have shown extraordinary commitment and worked tirelessly to pr protect and provide the best possible care to patients. I know many of you have personally made sacrifices 
to support the province's pandemic response. And I want to express my and our government's heartfelt gratitude. Our government is proud to have made record investments in our provincial nursing workforce. Most recently, we announced our historic investment in Ontario's nurses, providing them with a retention incentive of up to $5,000 per person. We've also prioritized our health human resource capacity, especially these past two years. This includes supporting career laddering for PSWs into RPN roles and RPNs into RN careers, as well as increasing seats in nursing programs to add thousands of new nurses to our system. In addition, the province is collaborating with our health system partners to deploy internationally educated nurse applicants into hospitals and long-term care homes. And we're also pleased to support RNAO's nursing education initiative and are proud of the work done as part of Ontario's enhanced extern program. While these steps and these investments are important steps to strengthen our nursing workforce, I certainly am aware that there is more work that needs to be done. And I know my successor will work like with partners like Doris and the RNAO to accomplish all of these things. Once again, thank you to all of you for your ongoing leadership and advocacy to support better patient care in our province. And uh, while I am leaving politics, I won't say goodbye, but instead au revoir, because I don't know when and I don't know how, but I certainly do hope that our paths will cross again. Thank you. Christine, I, uh, I wish I was in person because uh, I have a, a gift for you um, because you grow relationships, Christine. And I did say uh, to Morgan that uh, we invited you because we wanted to recognize you. We wanted to recognize um, the tremendous uh, giving to this province for I don't know even how many years, uh, many, many. Uh, and. And we know that it was not easy these two and a half years with the pandemic. We know, and I know certainly because we spoke so many times about so many things. Uh, you were in opposition, a friend of RNO. You were in government close to RNO. You were the person that uh, people may not know, but I will say it, also announced the funding for Indigenous Focus. Uh, work of RNO. So if Elder Perry is here, please know Elder Perry that we have a debt of gratitude to uh, Minister Elliot. And, um, and you um, eh, never, never waver to answer to calls, even if you knew that the, the comments or the questions uh, will not be exactly what, what, the, what perhaps uh, eh, you, you would have preferred to hear. Um, I know we will continue to be friends and colleagues. I know that because we were before you were a minister and when you were an ombudsman, you called many times for advice. And I know my colleagues, uh, Angela, Dr. Angela Cooper Brathway has met you and many, many of our colleagues. And we have absolute admiration for you as a human being, as a person, uh, and as a minister that went through two and a half years of a, of a very, very, very grueling and tough pandemic. So um, it will come one day when I take you for lunch in person, this or another plan, <laughs> and you still want this one for me. But absolutely, please know that we uh, admire you and value uh, your partnership, and, and we know it was not easy. Well, thank you very much, Doris, and I wish you and the RNAO, all of the best in not just this conference that you're having, but in the work that you're doing in the future, because you make a huge difference in the lives of all Ontarians. So thank you. Thank you, Miigwech. Thank you again, Christine, for your years of dedication to Ontario and to the health of its citizens. Thank you, Morgan. Uh, so it is now time to hear from our Liberal representative. John Frazier is the Member of Provincial Parliament for Ottawa South, 
critic for health and long-term care, intergovernmental affairs, agriculture, food, and rural affairs, and the interim leader of the Ontario Liberal Party. John has been a longtime friend of RNAO and is the proud son of a nurse, uh, and we are very happy to have him join with us once again. Thank you very much, Morgan, and thank you for all your work uh, to elevate and raise uh, the profession of nursing and all your members. And uh, also congratulations to uh, Dr. Holloway on uh, her ascension to the presidency and uh, for her work uh, that is going to continue the elevation of the profession of nursing and where the concerns of nurses are heard in Ontario. And to my friend Doris, thanks for inviting me once again. Um, um, I can remember back the first time we met at the first BPSO. Um, um, I guess it was a meeting or a, um, a general meeting, and uh, that was some years ago. And I want to thank you for all your work uh, on behalf of nurses. And as Morgan said, I'm the son of a nurse. It's something that I'm very proud of. My mother, Mary, uh, worked for as a, had a nursing career of 33 years as a public health nurse and with the VON, and then uh, worked on the wards of the National Defense Medical Center for about uh, for about 30 years. So she's um, um, taught me a lot. I've learned a lot from her. Um, you know, I, I always joke, and you've heard me say this before in AGMs, that if there was a nurse in every family, we'd solve our primary call, care problem because mom was always the first call whenever anything happened and somebody wasn't feeling well. And, and on that, I want to thank uh, everyone in attendance at this AGM and all nurses across Ontario for all your work during this pandemic. You know, uh, keeping people safe. Um, I know um, that you did that at risk to yourselves and at risk to your families. Uh, I know that because I'm a caregiver for my mom and um, I did give her COVID a few weeks ago uh, and um, uh, obviously inadvertently, uh, but it was something that I was really afraid of. And um, she's fine, uh, but I it maybe even better understand the kind of risks that healthcare workers take every day. So uh, we're returning to the legislature probably this summer, and Ontario Liberals are going to continue to fight for the things important to nurses and to all Ontarians, our publicly funded healthcare system. And I'll outline a few priorities I think that are really important for us right now as a province. Um, and I should say. I meant to say this at the beginning. I want to th thank Christine Elliott for all her hard work on behalf of Ontarians. We didn't always agree, but I know that she worked hard and that she was always available and accountable day in and day out for the decisions that were made. And I have a tremendous amount of respect for her and uh, I wish her the best of luck. So right now in Ontario, we have a human a healthcare human resource crisis, in particular across the board. In particular, uh, Bill 124 uh, been a um, catalyst for that, or that's pushed it further uh, by not allowing nurses or other healthcare workers the right to bargain, while other workers on the front lines in the province uh, are able to bargain. It's just not just, and compensation is important. But respect is important. So the government has to repeal Bill 124, and they have to let nurses fairly bargain. That's the bottom line. That's the only way that they're going to begin to address this crisis that we have in human resources. Because if you, it's no good to have a bed if you don't have a nurse or a physiotherapist or someone there at the bedside to make sure that that person is getting the care that they need. Number two. We need to address uh, the backlog that exists in this province for um, you know, diagnostic, surgical, mental health procedures. Uh, so many people have put their lives on hold. In particular, children uh, wait longer than adults in almost every place for almost every service. And the government has to address that. And lastly, we have to guard against the privatization of our healthcare system. Uh, you know, we just saw recently that the uh, government's pollster started polling about whether you would like to pay to get better care. Um, wasn't a government poll, but it was their pollster. And so uh, I'm very concerned that this government will see the privatization uh, of healthcare care um, as, um, as something 
uh, that they'll want to do for their friends. In any event, those are three things I think that are going to be very important in the next parliament. Uh, I want to thank uh, RNAO again for inviting me for all the work that all the members of RNAO do across this province to keep people safe and healthy. Um, and what I like to say is caring for the people we care for most. Thanks very much. Merci. Thank you, MPP Fraser. And I love it that you call me your friend because I consider you also my friend. Uh, John, you are, you are just so classy. That's the first thing I need to say. Always, 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 always. You never lose your temper. You never lose your cool. You are always gracious to other people. You are one of those politicians, and, and we have several, but I wish every politician was that way that can cross across party lines to get to get things done. I know that that Mike will speak and will speak similar because he has that DNA piece too. But it makes you very unique. It makes you um, it, it, it makes you a, a bridge a bridge to get things done. And I don't think things can get done post pandemic because people are exhausted without those bridges. So you play a huge, huge role. And I know I will um, connect with uh, Steve. Uh, I feel very sorry for his loss simply because he worked very, very hard. And uh, he's a very, very excellent person also. Uh, and I know that my colleague Yuna say hi, Yuna, and all our Ottawa colleagues oh, yeah. are, are enamored with you. This is not just friends, they are enamored with you because you are always available. Uh, I remember when we went to Rido, to, to Pearly Rido, here was John. I went to a VPSO event, here was John. Uh, and, and it's not because you have nothing else to do, it's because this is who you are. You really were public service, not just politics, public service in your sleep. So thank you. Thank you for all you give to this province and for, and yes, we will work very, very uh, closely together and, and, and move things along together. Thanks, Doris. Thank you. Thank you, John, for joining us today. Uh, next, it's my pleasure to welcome MPP Mike Schreiner, the leader of the Ontario Green Party. Mike, Schne Mike Schreiner is the leader of the Green Party and MPP for Guelph. He was first elected in 2018 and is an outspoken advocate for climate action, affordable housing and mental health, and believes in putting people before politics. Prior to becoming leader of the Green Party of Ontario, Mike was an early champion of the local food movement, founding multiple projects to connect farmers and households. We're delighted to have Mike back to address our AGM. Please join me in welcoming MPP Schreiner to share some remarks. Thank you, Morgan, for that kind introduction. And thank you for your service as president. And just to say how much I value the relationship uh, the Ontario Greens have built with RNAO, and I'm looking forward to continuing that relationship with Dr. Holloway as well. Uh, to all your board members and nurses across the province, just a heartfelt thank you for how you've cared for our loved ones during the pandemic especially, but I would say each and every day. And Doris, uh, thank you so much for always being there when I needed advice um, insight, help. Um, we've built, I, I, I would hope, I would call a friendship and a strong relationship as well. And I hope you felt that in the leaders debate where I really tried to channel uh, all the meetings that I've had with nurses, especially over the last two years, uh, in, in, into the comments that I made. And uh, I also want to uh, just give a quick thank you to Minister Elliott for her years of service. I know I've asked you some tough questions and question period, and I know we haven't always agreed uh, on every issue, but certainly appreciate your, your service. And thinking ahead, um, you know, we're moving into a, a critical moment in time, uh, especially to address the health human resource crisis that we have in healthcare. And the Ontario Greens will be there with you fighting to repeal Bill 124 uh, and the pay equity uh, provisions of Bill 106 as well. 
our nurses need fair wages, better working conditions, and better benefits. And that is across the board. And I'm going to be continue to be relentless in our advocacy at Queens Park uh, to pay you what you deserve and and to show the gratitude in more than words, but in legislative actions. Also eager to work with you on really reframing the substance use crisis in the province as a public health emergency, not as a criminal justice issue, to work with you to make sure that we make the reforms in our long-term care and our home care systems. Our elders deserve it. The humanitarian crisis we especially had in long-term care and you know, RNAO has been at the forefront for decades now in writing the reports needed to reform our long-term care systems, to put care before profits, to put in the proper ratios to provide the dignified care our elders deserve. Those reports need to come off the shelf and be implemented. And I'm there to work with you. Greens are there to work with you to implement them. And I wanna close uh, by saying that one of the things I've always deeply appreciated and valued about RNAO is your commitment to addressing the social and environmental determinants of health. And, you know, we talked a lot in, in this campaign about ending legislative poverty in Ontario by doubling social assistance rates, addressing the homeless crisis, and just making sure that we invest in people and community because we know the social determinants of health directly affect our healthcare systems and the people who provide care in those systems. And also the environmental determinants of health. You know, the World Health Organization has made it very clear outside of the pandemic, the biggest health crisis facing people, you know, in Ontario and around the world is a climate crisis. And that we know we have to reduce air pollution. We know that we have to build healthier communities and protect the farmland that feeds us, the clean drinking water that sustains our life. And I just want to say how much I deeply appreciate the leadership that RNAO has provided in really educating the public and highlighting the importance of addressing the social and environmental determinants of health and how they directly affect the health and well being of people in this province. So thank you, and I'm looking forward to continuing to work with you uh, at Queen's Park over the next four years. MPP Mike Schreiner, every time you speak, I say you should be working at RNO because you are speaking about our policies every time, and you do that at Queen's Park without notes. And every time you speak, I also think you deserve to have more people with you. So you had two people running that were nurses, you are going to have more in the future because you're doing such an amazing job. I will never forget uh, several interventions that you had on very difficult issues without going into detail. And you were the first that stood up, whether it was about uh, something that was said about the colleague across the, the, the other side or whatever it was, you have the, the moral compass and the, and the strength to just stand up and say it. And, and please know that we appreciate that. Please know that uh, we are here to work uh, with the elected government. It is an elected government and you said it on the day of the elections. And we will make sure that we bring together the elected government, you and the liberals and the NDP to make this province tick for nurses, for other health professionals that are also in crisis. We are not the only professionals that have a health human resource crisis. In fact, one of the guests today is a, a colleague, a nurse that is at WHO, uh, hi, I, I, and, and, and she knows the crisis is all over the world. But here in Ontario, you know, we need to get rid of at least one piece that we can, which is Bill 124 and you will help us. Uh, but there is a lot more that needs to be done and we will be working closely, closely with you and all others. So thank you from Arenio. Thank you from the nurses in your riding. 
Uh, they love working with you. And thank you for writing op-ed pieces with us. We need that one too. <laughs> Anytime, Doris. I'm happy, happy to work with you and work across party lines to really put people and nurses first. So thank you. Thank you, Kimmy Witch. Thanks, Mike, for being here with us tonight. And you you didn't get your uh, signature joke, the leader of the party with 100% caucus agreement in this time. So I mean, I'm hoping that you'll always have 100% agreement, but that uh, someday you'll be more more than a solo, a solo caucus. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's great to hear from you. Uh, so now we'll hear from our international nursing colleagues from Sigma Theta Tau International Honor Society of Nursing and the International Council of Nurses. First, we'll hear from Dr. Kenneth Dion, President of Sigma Theta Tau International Honor Society of Nursing. Dr. Kenneth Dion, Assistant, Assistant Dean for Business Innovation and Strategic Relationships at the John Hopkins School of Nursing and President of Sigma, is a 40-year veteran of the healthcare industry. He is a nurse entrepreneur, inventor, and scholar. Dr. Dion founded Decision Critical Inc., an information systems company, to meet the education, compliance, and competency development needs of healthcare organizations. Decision Critical was acquired by HealthStream Inc., where Dr. Dion served as Vice President and Chief of Nursing Informatics. He joined Hopkins in 2018. He earned his bachelor's degree in nursing at the University of Central Florida and his MBA, MSCN, and PhD in nursing systems at the University of Te Texas at Austin. Dr. Dion was unable to join us tonight, but has sent us remarks in a video. Hello, I'm Dr. Ken Dion, president of Sigma. On behalf of our 135 members in more than 100 countries around the globe, it's my honor to bring you greetings. I would also like to applaud Pr President Hoffarth, President-elect Holloway, and CEO Grinspan for their work on bringing evidence-based practice to the bedside. The membership of Sigma truly values the relationship that we have with the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario. I'd like to share with you that it's Sigma's 100th anniversary and that during this biennium, we have a call to action to be bold. We believe that being bold is being based on three tenets, which will help us to change the dialogue when it comes to advancing the nursing agenda. Those tenets, our economics, technology, and conservation. Fluency in these three pillars of being bold is crucial for us if we're going to move the nursing agenda forward. So I would ask all of you to join us in being bold. Being bold doesn't mean being the loudest voice in the room, being pejorative or controversial. It means being armed with facts, and being willing to dialogue. It takes love, courage, and honor. So we wish all of you at the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario a fantastic meeting and a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you to Ken. And I need to say that the book that we did first in English with Sigma is the first book translated to a different language, in this case to Spanish by, Sig by Sigma. So it's the first book they have in another language, uh, the book that we have on uh, transforming nursing through knowledge. So good partnership in many, many ways with Sigma. Okay, and thanks to Dr. Dion for your wonderful remarks. Uh, so now we will hear from Dr. Pamela Cipriano, President of the International Council of Nurses. Dr. Pamela Cipriano, an internationally recognized nursing leader, was elected as the 29th president of the International Council of Nurses. The election took place in the context of the meeting of ICN's governing body, the Council of National Nursing Association Representatives, which was held virtually from the 4th to 6th of October in 2021. Former ICN first vice president from 2017 to 2021, 
Dr. Cipriano also serves as Dean of the University of Virginia School of Nursing and was president of the American Nurses Association from 2014 to 2018. Dr. Cipriano is well known both in her own country, the United States of America, and internationally as a strong advocate for the nursing profession. During her over 40 year career, she has led efforts to advance the role and visibility of nurses and increase nursing's impact and influence on policy. Dr. Cipriano has also served on the board of directors of the American Nurses Credentialing Center and the American Academy of Nursing. She is a leader in the National Academy of Medicine's Action Collaborative on Clinician Wellbeing and Resilience, which is addressing the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on the physical and mental health of all clinicians. She was the inaugural, inaugural editor-in-chief of the journal American Nurse Today. Dr. Cipriano was unable to join us tonight, but has sent us her remarks in a video as well. Hello, I'm Pam Cipriano, President of the International Council of Nurses. It gives me great pleasure to bring greetings to President Hoffer, CEO Dr. Grinspan, and colleagues of the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario. On behalf of the ICN Board of Directors, our staff, and more than our 130 National Nursing Association members, we wish you a successful meeting, your 97th annual general meeting. Reflecting together on the COVID-19 pandemic and nursing through crisis, I know many of you persevered in difficult circumstances throughout the pandemic, sometimes at great personal risk. The world has learned how vital our work is to the lives and livelihoods of the people and communities we serve. You've been resourceful to adapt to the many challenges COVID presented with creative changes to practice models, being a source of truth to the public, and ensuring marginalized groups received care they deserve. At the same time, the long-term effects on your physical and mental well-being may not be fully realized for some time yet to come, yet you continue to show up, speak out for those who struggle to receive health care, advocate for the well-being of nurses, and address ongoing public health crises. We recently celebrated International Nurses Day with the theme, Nurses, a Voice to Lead, invest in nursing and respect rights to secure global health. The stories aren't limited to one day, but resonate throughout the year. ICN stands with all of the world's nurses, and as always, we have been lobbying for your safety, eliminating violence against healthcare workers, and making the case for greater investments in nursing jobs, education, and leadership. Thank you for all your efforts to nurse through these crises to make a difference and to reinforce to the world why a strong and successful supported nursing workforce is critical for health. I wish you a successful meeting that lifts spirits and restores joy and meaning as you recognize your many accomplishments and celebrate the resilience and strength that are the mark of nursing. Many thanks, Dr. Cipriano. It's always great to hear from our international nursing colleagues. It is now my pleasure to invite RNAO CEO, Dr. Doris Grinspan, to commence this year's designation celebration of best practice spotlight organizations. Thank you so very much, President Offer. And so good to be with all of you colleagues. Uh, magnificent, and of course, magnificent to celebrate our BPSOs this year again, uh, the new ones. So uh, before we begin, I want to recognize a few people that uh, make this program uh, the success that it is. Uh, Heather McConnell, Director of International Affairs and Best Practice Guidelines Center. Nafsin Nizum, Associate Director, Guideline Development. Susan McNeil, Associate Director, Guideline Implementation and Knowledge Transfer, Janet Chi, Associate Director, LTC Program, uh, do, and Dr. Shanoya Nick, Associate Director, Evaluation, and Chief Nurse Scientist at RNO. And indeed, the entire Best Practice Program expert team for their superb leadership and diligence in working with our BPSOs from their application process to where they stand today soon to be designated at this uh, celebration. And I also want to thank the other members of RNO, 
uh, team. I want to thank communications. I under uh, uh, Marian Zich. I want to thank you, IT. All all of you. You know you have contributed to the success of the program. As the founder of the Renew VPG program and its BPSO social movement, I marvel every single time I knew on how far we have come since we launched the program under the inspiring championship of Minister of Health, Elizabeth Whitmer in 1999. I remember clicking to send the proposal. I remember the phone call and I remember when uh, the first uh, financial support came and it has never stopped. Every single government, every single government, different parties, different ministers have understood how important is our program for the health of Ontarians. And every single government have also understood that sharing this program with others less fortunate in the world in terms of resources is the right thing to do. Of course, you need to know that we don't provide funds to people in other jurisdictions, whether in Canada or internationally, but we provide the expertise, we provide the guidelines, we provide, we train on the coaching, we provide the PowerPoints, and they provide the resources and they make it a huge success. Whether it is in indigenous focused communities here in Ontario, that are less resourced than general communities, or whether it is in long-term care that are less resourced here in this rich country of ours, or whether it is in countries in other parts of the world that are much, much less fortunate in terms of funding. And the colleague that is joining us from WHO and wanting to work now in Bangladesh you bet we will work together because we have the expertise, we have the know-how, and we have the generosity of this country and of this government, successive governments, that we can share our expertise and we can share our knowledge. It is and been, it is indeed the work of staff, the work of panels with hundreds, thousands of people that volunteer their hours and expertise. It is the early adopters, the members of RNEO at the beginning, and now 100,000 champions around the world and in Canada. And it is, and we must recognize, consecutive ministers of health and civil servants, some of which are here today, and I'm sure many will be next year because, Morgan, we are going to say it again. This is the last AGM in Zoom. Hopefully this time it will work. Um, today, today, we are going to witness the joy of 15 VPSO designates that will be honored. The VPG program is an Ontario success and an international story, acclaimed everywhere that is improving outcomes for persons, organizations, and health systems everywhere in the world, including here at home. BPSOs, including the ones graduating today, are health service organizations and academic institutions that have entered into a formal three-year agreement with RNO to implement in a systematic way multiple RNO clinical guidelines and evaluate their impact on patients, organizations, and health system outcomes. With over a thousand over a thousand entire health organizations formally involved through these agreements with RNO, 600 of them in Ontario, including 129 long term care homes. BPSOs are a formidable knowledge movement. That's what they are a knowledge movement like no other. Tonight, as I said, we will designate. 15 additional organizations. What is special about our program, in addition to the rigor and the tremendous robustness and comprehensiveness of the program in each one of the pillars, is our constant capacity of being at the cutting edge of guideline development, methodology and implementation science, as well as evaluation methods. 
I'm not going to spill the beans. You will hear some very exciting news tomorrow on where we are taking the program next. But for tonight, what you need to know is that the strong collective identity developed by BPSOs and their unwavering commitment to excellence encourages all, not only us at, here at home or the staff at home office, everybody to constantly learn from one another. Because not only we learn from the guidelines, we learn from the expertise that every BPSO contributes and to measure evidence uptake and outcome success. I would like to acknowledge that we have other national and international VPSOs that have joined us tonight to celebrate with their colleagues the new designates as they move to the next stage of VPSO designation. So as we move along, let's see our VPSOs in action. And I want to acknowledge uh, Roberto from Chile that is running for the government, the program with the Min Salitas, and Olga from Colombia, and the colleagues from Australia, from China, from everywhere, for the effort, the commitment you do, and of course, to the ones here at home that are working day in and day out with us, including seven, seven BPSO OHT. So we will put the video. Raulito, take it over. Thank you, Doris. Mr. Cameron Woodland's long-term care home in Burlington, Ontario, Canada. We are thrilled to be a designated best practice spotlight organization. The guidelines that we have implemented over the last three years are improving the lives of our residents. Hola, soy Fernando Arauz, subsecretario de Redes Asistenciales del Ministerio de Salud. Hoy, como ministerios, estamos en proceso de certificación como BBSO, host del programa BBG, de la Asociación de Enfermeras Registradas de Ontario, RNAO, lo que nos va a permitir acreditar a centros comprometidos con la excelencia en Chile. Al día de hoy hemos expandido este programa a más de 28 establecimientos de la red asistencial que ya están implementando diferentes guías clínicas. ¡Súmate a los cuidados de excelencia!
It just gives you, you know, uh, just incredible, incredible, right? How um, a professional organization that is Ontario based can make such a difference both at home and abroad. And as I said, it requires generosity from governments, civil servants, our own colleagues here and colleagues abroad because they are now also training others. When governments in other countries start to put resources for their own nurses in those countries, you can picture that the sky is the limit, right? We provide the knowledge, the expertise, the generosity, and then they take it over and it's sustainable. So that is what Arenio does and we will continue to do. And on behalf of the entire team that works with the BPSOs and the entire organization and our members, we first want to congratulate the international BPSOs in China and in Chile that have done tremendous work and we know that we'll continue to do. And of course, we want to congratulate our own BPSOs that are doing amazing work and will continue to do. So thank you, uh, gracias, son maravillosos, and back to you, Cheche, back to you, President Morgan. Thank you, Doris. It's so exciting to see all of the wonderful work that this year's designates have accomplished. Uh, and the video was a really nice touch to be able to hear from all of them and see them at their uh, places of work. I would like to thank our members and guests for joining us um, in our pride as we open RNAO's AGM celebrations. You have all been part of our accomplishments over the past year, and we look forward to continuing to partner with you. Uh, I now declare the opening ceremonies for the RNAO's 97th Annual General Meeting closed. Thank you to everybody for attending tonight, and we will see you tomorrow for the AGM at 9 a.m. Have a great rest of your evening. Thank you, President Offar, and thank you, Raulito, for that magnificent video and to all the BPSOs that gave you the materials. Ifra, go and rest. I know that we are still on Zoom, but so be it. We need to have some fun. <laughs> <laughs>